something to the note of this the last time I talked to you guys, which I think was when you had your sub pop debut. Um, a long time ago, I, I think that was the last time we had a conversation. Um, I was kind of uh, surprised or impressed that considering everything that all of you have going on, you still sort of continue to convene for this really groundbreaking, top-notch experimental hip-hop music group. And, uh, you know, the, the records continue to stay quality. And, and now these days, it seems like we're soundtracking more, we're acting more. I, I know Jonathan just dropped uh, uh, his uh, a new solo record this uh, this year too. I mean, how exactly are you guys like doing all this shit? I know you guys aren't music reviewers, but in a really weird way, I feel like you're coming for my spot because I do call myself the busiest music nerd and you guys are like kind of doing fucking everything <laughs> and I, I, wish, I wish you'd slow down a little bit, but uh, how is it all happening? Are you all type A personalities sort of like forming like fucking Voltron and just like coming out with these godlike rap records? Uh, um, <laughs> David's the I mean, busiest I think I'll... answer. <laughs> What's up? I said David's the busiest. I didn't mean to cut you off. You should answer. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, my answer is that these guys do a ton of heavy lifting and I just rap on things. I, I, I uh, but we also a lot of these songs, you know, we we make a ton of music in these like sort of fits and starts, but like it takes so long to get it out. So these songs have been, in, you know, these these songs, most of them could have come out when the last album came out, but we we didn't because we thought we would release them back to back and then a, and then a pandemic happened. So um, so it, it just it just has sort of fallen that way. But we do. It's interesting. It takes us a long time to think of to like settle on any given song. But once we do, they they come out pretty quickly, you know, so and then we just keep tweaking things until we can release them. Yeah, some things are really, really fast. And then some things take years, you know. Um, I mean, like, like some songs we make in a day and then like run for your life on their exist <laughs> took months of going out and trying to actually get that idea to work and things like that. So, it, you know, um, there's like really intense periods of work punctuated by these like long stretches where we like kind of keep chipping away at like certain ideas or something. Um, and, and, you know, how would you guys say you overcome the fact that you are sort of working on this material through such long stretches of time, but still at the end of all of it, you end up with a really cohesive concept or focus or narrative, especially on the last several projects? Because if you're talking about working on tracks and bits and, and maybe it sort of works, um, you know, effectively on something like your self-titled record, because, you know, uh, uh, each track kind of works in its own kind of context. But when you're talking about something like the last two LPs or uh, even your previous one, you know, you're telling a story or you're having all of these songs weave together and enforce a vibe and for sort of an aesthetic and, you know, kind of like, um, you know, uh, uh, give give the listener sort of a, uh, a really specific, you know, um, uh, artistic direction. Well, I, I mean, I, a lot of that, like, I, I definitely feel like every time we've let, let the stuff sit for a while and we revisit, it's almost like we need a day of just like, we just like sit and listen to everything and talk about it again and kind of get our heads back together. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think at this point we've been doing it long enough that we, and, 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 and the, the work is so representative of like who we are as artists do at this point that we can kind of trust that it's going to be okay and just keep working mm -hmm. to a certain degree. Right. And then like, I mean, to me making work like this or making film scores or making any of the things I do is really just a game about whether I'm looking at the little picture or the big picture. And I try to like, just switch those two hats back and forth. And if you're working on the little picture, it doesn't matter. You're just like, oh, I'm just like programming these cut up drums for 12 hours or something, you know, like, and I'm just doing that. And then later I'll listen to the whole thing and decide if they work or not. And then I'll make like big sweeping changes and then go back and do like fine detail work. And I think that's kind of how we work too. David, if you could uh, address that sort of directly too, because I mean, a lot of the themes and concepts of these albums also sort of manifest themselves in, in the stories that you tell on these tracks too. Yeah, I mean, it. We're good at the at the conceptual part of it. I think it kind of that is that is one of the things about 
this band has always been sort of setting up the parameters for both for the band as a whole and then for any given song too and choosing choosing reference points and then figuring out how to execute those things in a way that still feels like we want the song to feel. So that's kind of the game all the time, I think. Um, and so once we kind of, and, and I think it's a lot more of a collective process than people would assume, generally speaking, right? People assume like I write raps and these guys make music, but it doesn't really work like that. We talk about, we, we come up with the concept for a song or for a record more together than that would seem. And then my job in the band is to execute the writing of the lyrics. But like, we've already outlined the song, basically. It, it's kind of, it, it is like not dissimilar to some of the writer's rooms I've, I've worked in where like, really the hard part is outlining the thing. And then you just kind of divide up the work of making the specific episode, you know? But once, once we figure out that it's gonna work, I, I just have to make things sound pretty. Um, you know, in, in terms of those reference points, is there anything to you guys, because at least to me from an outsider perspective, uh, this record feels a little more immense in that respect, because you're talking about balancing different shades and reference points within the sort of medium of horror, different frames of reference within hip hop music, and also different frames of reference within noise music, too, because you guys are bouncing between power electronics and sort of like, you know, uh, avant-garde sort of very noisy acoustic music too, and industrial music as well. And it's sort of like each track stylistically has its own sort of musical flavor. And meanwhile, there are like different uh, references, different eras of hip hop and different movie references like going on throughout the record. There's like so many different touchstones. And <laughs> in a way, it's so impossibly nerdy. I, I can't uh, not <laughs> love it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it definitely is that. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess I, when we started, I think a lot of the stuff we were doing was about um, this specific, you know, maybe this regional or historical moment in hip hop or this type of hip hop or this subgenre applied to however we would sort of contribute our experimental music background to that, uh, how we would sort of arrange it with that. Um, and, and the, the, Lyrics just sort of ended up falling into generally being um, scary stories about bad things happening to people. Um, and so there was almost a natural uh, pull to doing this, uh, this type of a record anyway. And I think the horror movie, horror literature stuff was popping up uh, just naturally in David's writing, just because you know, rap is referential in a lot of ways. I mean, you know, every rapper is going to reference movies here and there. Um, and that just for David to be playing that game, um, we just started, I think, doing it more consciously for this record to be like, these are the specific movies we're referencing. You know, when it, when it started, it could have, you know, slipped into, you know, Scarface or Goodfellas or whatever the classic hip hop references are. And then we just started pulling them in the direction of, you know, um, horror movies specifically for this, I think. Just so it wasn't like it's like adding a new layer necessarily. Uh, it's just like it's narrowing what the references that were going to appear anyway hmm. are. Thank you very much for watching this interview clip over on TND Streams. To see the full interview, click on the video link next to my head or down below, or hit up the link to subscribe to the channel or see our Patreon page to support what we do and get some extra bonus monthly content in the process. Uh, Anthony Fantano, forever.